You're listening to World of Empowerment Radio. Your station for practical spirituality in a changing world. And here are your hosts, Angel Rose and Ahanu. You are very welcome. I am Ahanu, and on behalf of Angel Rose, welcome to this interview we have today with Deborah Bruce. Deborah had a dark night of the soul a long time ago, and it shaped the rest of her life. Indeed, age five, she had encounters with reptiles on her walls of her bedroom. And at age 16, she witnessed alien aircraft. And at age 17, she was asking the kinds of questions that most don't ask until they're much older. And that was, is this all there is? So clearly she is tapped in. She's in the process of manifesting a new place for herself. And she has a profound message for everybody. And that message will be revealed at the end of the interview. So stay tuned. Have a listen. Deborah Bruce. And I um, went through the dark night of the soul for three years. Oh, it was terrible. Yeah. Yeah. And it started then when I started, I started like, Owning all the way into town and back. Yeah. And then it started. And I didn't really know if that's what it was or not. You know, I I didn't know. But it's been, oh my gosh, probably like five years, four years, five, about five years, I think, I've been doing it. And it doesn't always come, but sometimes it just comes when I'm listening to something or it just comes. Yeah. I don't have to do anything special. It just comes out. And do you feel it through your body or is it in your mind or is it in like your, your soul? Can you describe how? Um, I don't know. I don't want to describe it. Just, it just comes. It just flows. I don't know. I don't, I don't really know. It just, yeah, not, it's not in my brain. It just comes out. Right. I think it's from the universal consciousness, is what I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you when you say it just comes out, does it come out physically? Like does it come out via tones or like in your voice or uh just words. Words speak. Um and I don't really do any hand you know, like some people do hand you know, move their hands around so I don't really do that once in a great while, but it doesn't come out like that. And it's been changing over time. So it's and, weird. I want me to explain. It's just been, it's becoming more complex. Just different sounds. And like, sometimes it's like choppy. Like, you know, kind of like that. And, yeah. And I don't know where that comes from. <laughs> I just got goosebumps. Do you, do you hear it? Like, is that the way it, it comes in? Like, do you, are you hearing it? Or is it just kind of forming some kind of... It just comes out of my mouth. Which I don't really... I don't see it. I don't... It just comes out. And sometimes, like, I wonder if I'm, like... If, <laughs> if I'm talking to somebody, it starts coming out. I, that, I don't think that's happened, but, you know... Yeah. Do you understand what it means or what it's saying? No, no. I have no idea. I just know sometimes when I'm listening to different videos, spiritual videos... Mm-hmm. It would come like it seems like in response to what I'm listening to. Yes. You know. Yeah. I don't know. That's why I don't know what to do with it. I just right. I no idea well, what is going on? Well, now we're we're in the same boat, Deborah. You have to excuse our ignorance because we're not familiar with what you're talking about, right? And uh, but, 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 but we're very respectful of it because there is another friend of ours who 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 speaks what she calls. Um, you know, Shirley Janine, she oh. speaks dolphin, dolphin speak. And oh. like what you were describing, she says she, it just comes out of her and she speaks this kind of squeak dolphin type language, you know? And yeah. she also says that she doesn't understand exactly what it's saying, except that she feels it's very loving. Yeah. Do you feel yeah, I still I feel a lot of love coming through. So I got goosebumps again. <laughs> it's talking about it. Woo! Right. I, I think I want to, I got to put something on my, my arm or something. 
I gotta put something on my my arms are freezing. Hold on a minute. Eating the chill. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> I was just like putting cold. So I was telling Ahano that we have, have another friend in Prescott who is actually a healer and um she does it through light language. You know, like her whole thing is kind of like a almost like a psychic surgery, but with you know, she she'll get these light language sounds while she's working on you. Uh-huh. Yes. So that's the other person. I think she teaches it even how to do light language. I've done um I s I was learning a type of healing called alchemical healing by uh -huh. Nikki Scully, who's in Eugene. I think she's still in Eugene. And um that worked really well for me and I learned how to do energy balls and I really like doing that. I I don't really I'm not really connected to it anymore um because i was still learning and that there was like all these symbols and and it was hard to remember all that it just didn't come like naturally but i found a lot of healing work too so maybe there's some correlation there but i, I mean i've been experiencing things since i was like five <laughs> wow can you tell us a bit about your background your your history well, like you said since well, you were three when i was five like, well, for one thing, I have very little religious programming. Very little. You're blessed. <laughs> I, I don't like what people are talking about. You know, when they talk about that... the Bible, I have no idea what they're talking about. Right. So I try to study the Bible. I just you know, can't do it. <laughs> it's just like a thing. Oh, wow. So, but when I was five, my sister also experienced this. We had alligators underneath our beds. And there was water, murky, murky water, under, just underneath our beds. We had two twin beds. Yeah. I would stand up on the bed and look down. I could still see it. And I wasn't scared. They were just, like, around. So I was wondering if there was some connection to Egypt there. I don't know. Interesting. But I'm, I'm like, I've got a little interested in Egyptian things, but I don't, you know, I don't, I don't really have a, strong connection there and then yeah. also a big dragon would come on the wall when we had like our bunk beds come on the wall and it was like 2d but it was breathing fire wow. <laughs> I going out telling my dad at night he was like studying because he was studying for his mba and i went out there and told him about it and he was like no I'll just get <laughs> but i never forgot those two things when i was five and then yes. when I was 16, I saw my first UFO, and my boyfriend and I were driving, and other people saw it too, because everybody stopped alongside the road, like, whoa, and it just yeah. like, shoom, zoomed out of the sky, you know, just, it was like hovering, and then zoom, so yeah. I don't forget that. So but there was no contact, there was no contact with you guys, you just saw it, you witnessed oh, yeah, it. Yeah, I just saw it, and I, I had... Well, I've had similar, I mean, so when I had my farm, <clears throat> I was on a little mountain about 1,200 feet up, and at night, I saw, like, these circular lights. They were, they were, like, individual craft, and they were, like, like, maybe five or six of them in a circle, and they were taking turns blinking at each other. Yeah, it's... Jeez. It's making like stops, too. <laughs> yeah. How close are you to Crater Lake? I was, my farm was down in Southern Oregon. So I was maybe, I don't know. I was in, um, in Oakland, right by Roseburg. So it's Douglas County. So it's kind of a straight shot over there, but I don't know, maybe 30 miles. Maybe, I'm not really sure. I mean, are you aware of the um, UFO activity at Crater Lake? No, but that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah, there's. it's been reported for a long time. I mean, missing people, first of all, and then seeing ships go under the water and come back out from the water. Oh, I've never heard that. Wow. Yeah, so there's a lot of ET activity over there and also around Mount, Mount Shasta. I, just, love, yeah, I, I just love Mount Shasta. I, just, I, could, I could live over there. <laughs> well, I don't want to... California, Oregon's bad enough. You know? <laughs> yeah, there's somebody else that does um, 
you, he does UFO sightings at his home somewhere in Oregon. There's another mountain um, around there. I can't remember it now. Darn it. And Grant's Pass up near there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Up near there. He's got a farm up there. And um, what's his name again? I, I've forgotten. But I remember who you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, has, he has sightings all, all the time where people come and, on his property and they do these viewings at night. And, is that in the Siskiyou Mountains? No, it's not the Siskiyou. It's, I don't know if I hear it, but I just I can't remember it right now. But anyway, the point is there's a lot of UFO stuff around you over there. Oh, I have no idea. Well, I'm I'm like three hours north now. Yeah. So. Yeah. Do you think that there's some connection, Deborah, between your witnessing these alien ships and the reptiles you mentioned, or the crocodiles? Was it crocodiles? You said yeah. Uh, what um, alligators? Alligators. Alligators. Do you do you think that there's some connection between that ability to see those or to witness that? and the light language that you encountered later in life. I, just, I think it's all related. I mean, everything, all my experiences, you know, so, like when I was 17, I remember saying, is this all there is? Right. Is this all there is? Yes, yes. yes. That's when I started astro projecting and I didn't know what it was. I just did it. And I did it up until the time when I got pregnant. And then I was like, whoa, I got, I don't want to do this when I'm pregnant. It just freaked me out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so I, I was, I, I was like 17 or 18 and I started doing that. And when I went to university, I, uh, so I was, I'm always like a lot of these experiences are always the observer or, and the participant at the same time, gotcha. like, so like multi-dimensional, you know, I guess. Yeah. And I could see, um, so I was modeling for the sculpture department and I was in art school. And, and I remember standing on the podium and I always had my dog with me too. And so I, I could, this isn't a glove factory. So the ceilings were, you know, huge, tall, very tall. So I, I could see myself flying around and, but I could also look down on myself, seeing myself standing there. So I got, I do that a lot, participant and observer. And, and my dog was looking up. She saw me. <laughs> yeah. Which I was huh. like, oh, this is like insane. So, you know, I did a lot of that. And um, when I was when I was going to grad school, that was an undergrad. When I was going to grad school, I was driving on the highway to drive like 45 minutes. So it's very hypnotic. So I could see myself driving from above. And then I could see myself up there looking down. So, and then I could experience things like, like a, a problem I was working on in the studio. And then, so I saw it as I was driving while I was also looking down. And I, um, and then I, I didn't, after that, I solved the problem and I didn't want to create it, you know, in the physical. Someone said, why? Because, I, yeah. you know, why do I want to do it again? <laughs> yes. So, so I have a lot of those kind of experiences that just pop in and and leave lasting impressions on me. And I mean, people are more open to accept these kinds of things now and talk about them. But at that time, did you did you find it difficult to share those experiences? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I can I can tell anybody. It become like absolutely crazy. Yeah, and I was blind, and I didn't tell anybody, you know, until. Right. Until like later on, my my um, the husband who passed um, left me and then passed, so but told me all kinds of things spiritually because he was so channeling stuff. After he went to a workshop with um, it was uh, Ewan Energetics, and he did like a three day week that was like many many years ago, maybe fifteen years ago, and. Yeah. He came back from that and he, he just was channeling. I mean, this information was coming. It was like amazing. He told me my one daughter, I've had 54 lifetimes with her. My other one, I never had a lifetime with. My niece, I've had lifetimes with. And then told me that I was an angel in the Middle East at during, in dream time, working with people, helping people. It was like 
there was a war going on. I don't remember what it was then because that was a long time ago. Wow. So, but yeah, there's all kinds of like, you know, with some amazing information and also um, like confirm some of the things I was seeing. You know, like I'd see some past lives, which I really think are current lives. I don't really think, I don't think there's past lives because that's a time thing and we don't mm. have time. <laughs> time is always now, you know, so. Yes. So I, um, I saw this one is like, oh, way back, dancing around with a big skirt on, you know, it was all the mountains and all the stone. That's all I remember from that. And then yeah. another time it was Lemuria and I was in a hooded robe without any hair. It's like, but with two other people, we were in a cave looking out. And that's all, that's all I remember. And then another time was when I was being hung for being a wise woman. Uh-huh. And my husband turned me in and my two daughters also got hung. So I remember mm -hmm. that really clearly. Yeah. But those but those are just like little snippets that I've seen and I haven't really experienced anything really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, would you would you ever like would you be brave enough to like go into a hypnotic state and explore those Oh yeah. Yeah. You need, you need, you need... I just can never afford to pay anybody. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Wow. And and um have you ever written these things down, Deborah? Yeah, I yeah. have. In fact, I have like several journals and then I wrote it down again before I bought with you so that I could remember yeah. it. I'll be clear with it. So right, like, yeah. throws, like I've seen my uh seen different energies, like my the chair of my graduate committee, he passed away. Yeah. And I saw him at my mom's house. My mom saw him too. And he was like walking across the doorway, kind of like a shadowy like Jack. Such a sweet guy, you know. Yeah. And if my mom saw things too, she would see people to see accidents. And then she'd be driving and then she'd see people laying on the road from an accident. Like mm -hmm. oh, eggs. Stuff. And she's like, I can't do this anymore. So she stopped. Oh, so, oh geez. I never talked to my mom about this stuff because Yeah. I, I just never did, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the reason you wouldn't know this, but the reason I'm asking you about writing things down is because uh, um, we've we've published a lot of books, and um, indeed we write we write a lot of kind of spiritual type books ourselves, and we publish books for others who are in that spiritual awareness. Um, and I wonder, do you think that if you wrote it down and published it, that it would be of help to somebody else. Yeah, I could, you know, anything that's written down and people can read it is going to help somebody. But, you know, you never know who it will help. But yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah, that's my point because I think that there are a lot of people who have these abilities and have these awarenesses, but they they may feel that, you know, like you said earlier, that people would laugh at them or they think they're crazy or, you know, attempt to lock them up or discredit them in some way. But, but yet it, it, um, it releases them from their own mental prison when they know somebody else has had such an experience. Yeah. And it allows them to, for them to open up and share more. Yeah. So get that and they start writing. Yes. Anger well, Rose, Anger Rose is a great advocate of journaling. She yeah, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and I thought, I've got a bunch of books, and I also do collages for that too. Oh, nice one. Yeah, because I have, I have a, a master's in fine arts, so it's my passion, you know. And then I also I worked in mental health. I worked with people that were locked up, basically. They were um, committed, so I worked on a facility. So I saw. Most of them were schizophrenic, and I could see how they were pulling stuff from the universe. Yeah, and, yeah. and I think that they weren't really crazy. I think they were seeing yeah. stuff like I was seeing stuff. Right. Yeah. And um, are you are you open to people contacting you for help or for advice about what you're experiencing? Yeah, 
Yeah. I mean, then, you, but yeah. I mean, I do talk. My one friend who lives in Portland, we're the only people we have each other. That's all we have to talk about this stuff. And yes, what's similar? Yeah. Well, not he has different experiences, of course, but yeah, yeah. But what I mean is, like, you you don't practice as a counselor or a therapist or a coach or anything like that. Oh no, I, I thought about doing that. I just, I guess, I'm just more private. But then I yeah. talk about it too, so. I don't know that I'm really that private. Yeah. 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 And here's a question for you now, and I don't I don't mean to put you on the spot, but is it possible for you to give us an experience of that light language? Like can you can I you don't know if you're ask me that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> it's like I always keep it to myself because it's so I feel embarrassed almost. I don't know why that is, but no, I you don't. You guys and, don't do it if it's not comfortable. I, I'm just, I you know, I'm not trying to embarrass you. I, I really would love to have an experience of it myself. I know. Well, one thing I want to say before I do that is, like, I was taking some classes with, with Penny Kelly, and um, I just love her. Yeah. yeah like, who does love her? She's so great. <laughs> yeah. But I took a few classes from her. Just I wanted to get through some of the classes so I could get to the good stuff, because a lot of the beginning classes are, so, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> But um, I, she told I was telling her about my experience with with an energy that comes in, and I see it on my left side. Um, and she looks similar to me, but not the same. And she started becoming sitting like in a square or a rectangle, and kind of like a box almost. And she's like kind of hanging out of it. Just so much love. Ooh, so much love coming out and it started getting smaller and smaller and smaller and i said i told penny about that she's like you're integrating with your higher self I'm like what does that mean i have no idea but yeah. it does feel like that you know yes and i've had those you know, experiences like that where i like right now i'm like manifesting a new place my permanent place for my my forever home so I'm manifesting that, working on that. I don't like to say working on it. I'm, and I'm not creating it because that would be new. I am manifesting it. So I keep seeing. Well, is it? I think it's another aspect of myself. And she waves to me. <laughs> I wave back to her, and then I keep going on with the the visualization and the feelings and all the people in the in the in the manifestation, you know, the people that are enjoying my manifestation and all the love and the laughter and, you know, me sharing vegetables and all kinds of stuff. Ooh, got goosebumps again. <laughs> so, but it's weird that I see her in there and she always waves to me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm a little nutty. <laughs> Was that recent as a matter of interest when you spoke to Penny Kelly about that? What, what was that? What Was it recent? Um, A couple of years ago. Oh, couple, yeah. Well, the reason I'm asking you is because I, I'm sure you're aware that there's there appears to be a speeding up of those kind of integrations yeah. now. So I wouldn't be surprised if your manifestations would be happening a lot faster. Yeah. Now. Yeah. I'm, I'm also I'm like working with uh, the group called the Mastermind Connection. That's um, do you know about that? That's no. Aug Augie Noss. He's from. Finland, Indonesia, in the United States for many, many years now. He, he was a pilot. He manifested his way from Finland to the United States to go into flight school. And he manifested a lot of things. So he's really interesting. Really interesting mm -hmm. person. And so I've been going, we have three, we have three different groups um, every week. Right. So I'm, I've been like, kind of following his recipe for manifesting yeah and, um and it's, it's really interesting so mm -hmm. uh, aggie nos is that what you said his name was yeah. it's a a g e that's his first name and his last name is n o s t and he's uh, um he's also on youtube yeah they're, they're called um broad broadcast team alpha and it's him and his business partner, Nori Love. Okay, we'll check that out. 
yeah, he's a really interesting person. Yeah. And he wrote a book that I've been I've been reading that this one here. Spiritual science, higher conscience, conscious thinking. Yeah. So um and another channel is called Watchers Talk. Omar. He's doing he's reading the book. They're they're reading the book um like a chapter every every few days. And mm -hmm. Augie, Augie's there to answer any questions. So it's really interesting. I've been kind of going along kind of like a it's almost like like a study guide almost. I really yeah. like it. Wow. Well, that's very interesting, and um, people who, who who follow our channel, they're interested in those kinds of links and and referrals. Um, the, the the dark night of the soul that you mentioned, tell us about that. Oh, so, um, yeah. I mean, everybody has difficult times in their lives, but this was like to the nth degree, and everything that could go wrong went wrong. And when I saw I, my mom passed, she transitioned and she came, comes to visit me sometimes. And, um, I, I bought a property with the inheritance. It was just a piece of land on that little mountain in, um, in Southern Oregon. And so I had to like put up a barn and a quick cabin, but that didn't work out. So I'm living in my trailer. Um, but I couldn't find a job and I was not quite almost, you know, I was like, not quite like 60, I think I'm, I'm going to be 67. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't find a job. And so I couldn't retire yet because it was too early. And then when I did, I got $59. Oh my gosh, can't live on that, but it was, it was really difficult. Um, just. So many things, I felt like so many roadblocks were in the way. Right. Oh, and, and just, just really intense, just really intense things. But then I also, I had no electricity. And so, and I could barely get any salt coverage. So I was pretty much out of the EMTs. You know, I could, mm. I could, I think that really accelerated things because I had no, you know, electrical interference or cell tower interference. I was five miles away from the cell tower. Right. Oh, so, so I think that really, really helped things. And I had so many experiences with on that property, like the hummingbirds would come to me. And what? Like fly right in front of my face, like just inches away from me, mm. just there. And I had no flowers on the property. There's, there's nothing for them to eat there or to, you know, get nectar from. So, and then dragonflies too, they have come around me, go around in circles. And I would just, I'd sit out and just tell them how beautiful they are. And, um, that's happened so many times. That's happened here too, in the RV park, the yeah. dog, but they'll do the same thing around me. Maybe so, they, maybe the hummingbirds were getting nectar from your, your very essence, uh, your yeah. energy. Also, when I lived in Portland, I lived there for like 15 years. And I lived on the fifth floor and I'd always be sitting out my window hanging out and there was a tree right there. Hummingbird would come up and at five stories and just hover there and look at me, you know. So that's the first experience I had. I just told it how much I loved it, you know. Yeah. It was incredible. So that's happened a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, when I was Yeah. There, when I, there. Was, I was driving from Chicago. That's where my mom was from Chicago back to Oregon and I stopped on the interstate and there was all these cattle out in the field. And I just, I don't know why, I just felt like I needed to stop and talk to them. So <laughs> I'm like, okay, I just go with things, you know, I just go with the yeah. flow. So I stopped and, and they were really far, but I was telling them how beautiful they were. And then when I, so they started walking. And so I went to the truck to get my phone so I could take pictures of them. And they all came up really close. <laughs> This one, this one was helping another one, <laughs> uh, but they were just, they just seemed like they were so much love coming from them. You know, I, I don't know. I just do stuff like that. And it, it really affects me, you know, yeah. incredible. 
experiences that happen. Yeah. When you, when you mentioned about your experience with, um, in art school and your love of art, do you, do you ever attempt to kind of draw or paint these experiences? Oh yeah. 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 What you do? I've driven, I've drawn a few things of me, like flying my arms out. Yeah. Like super long hair, you know, just flying. Yeah. And also Archangel Michael came to me once and I don't know anything about I mean, I wasn't religious. I had no idea what, you know, but he told me I'll protect you because there was something going on. Like there was a lot of different light workers getting attacked energetically. So he said, I will protect you. You are safe. I guess I was concerned. I don't remember really, but I laid down and he was like at my feet in this right light. I mean, the light was incredible, but it was like a column and it came down and I drew that. Ooh, got goosebumps. Yeah. Oh, and I also, I see the tree, I see the auras of the trees. So I see just white light around them. And I've yeah. had that experience for so long, probably 20 years. And yeah. then so one time on my property, I saw, I looked up, the trees had cords running up to the sky. All the cook cords. And all these cords, you know, and so I yeah. drew that. You know, and nice. I'm like, please, do the word of that come like, I no idea. Would you would you be willing to share those pictures with us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, are you able to send them as an attachment or something that we could take a look? Yeah, I think I've got them all photographed. Yeah, or even take a picture with your phone and just. Take yeah, them. I'm pretty sure I have all, and you know, hmm. yeah, pictures of all. Of them. And I also like when I was doing my graduate work. My MF, my MFA. My thesis was um, a continuous narrative. So in my studio, I had seven panels. They were eight feet long, four feet wide. And they all connected together. So I made like, there was one that was 30 feet, one was 36 feet or something like that. I can't remember, there's two different groups. And when I was drawing them, I it felt very meditative, like, like energy was coming through me and out onto the um, panel. It was like wood wood panel I built. And so I drew like souls flying out of a fire because I was reading the Wyoming fire that was back in the 40s. And there was all these firefighters and they explained what like the fire is like a monster and just like incredible. It just all these images started to come out. So I was drawing these. Well, like this. I don't know if you can see this, but it's quite dusty. But can you see that? Oh, it's it's like dusty. flames coming down. Is that? Yeah, am I right? Souls flying out of the fire. Oh, I get you. Yes. Yeah. So I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. I did a lot of uh, like children will draw, but black crayon. And then they'll put other colors on top and then scrape through. That's why I did a lot of that. Oh, yeah. I don't know where that came from. It just happened. Like, yeah. <laughs> a lot of, it, was, it, was, it was very meditative when I was doing that work. It just felt like it was like flowing right through me. Beautiful. Hey, you believe? Ask her anything. Okay. So you, you have animals there. You have cats. My boy. Well, my dog. He's a rough collie. Right. His brother here is here also. Nice. Lisa. Right. Hi, <laughs> Mr. Brown. What about the un unconditional love from, from animals like that? Tell us oh. about that. Oh, yeah. It's intense feeling. Yeah. Yeah, I get that a lot. He's from these guys. Yeah. Little people, eh? Yeah. Yeah, opens so, it. I know, yeah. That, I know that anybody listening to us would love to hear the light language. Are you up for it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay. I feel like it's embarrassing. I don't know why. I feel no, 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 absolutely not. And as I say, don't do it if you don't feel comfortable, you know. I should get on it to the owner and he can't add a car that will need me to be cut. Ah, I see. Eat, eat, eat.
Wow, I say. Oh, yeah. I never know what's going to come. My God. Angie Rose remarked that that sounds very ancient. It it does. It sounds really, well, really. A little bit of Native American with other stuff thrown in. Yes. And I, I don't know anything about that. I just, I know my husband was channeling a Indian chief once when we were drumming. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Um, you know how so it's it's easy in modern languages to to recognize that one language might be uh, nice to listen to. Like they say, if the French language beautiful to listen to, the Italian lovely, and other languages are harsh and coarse. Like German is harder to listen to. Yeah. But what what you just voiced there that was that was like that was like that was like an orchestra. Yeah, that was beautiful to yeah. listen to. Thank you. Yeah, I, it feels so good when it's coming out. Just yeah, and I don't really have to do much. Sometimes it just comes. I don't even have to close my eyes. It just comes out. And it also sounds very wise. It's like it's like an old home. It's like yeah. It's like a feeling of an ancient home. Ancient yeah. home. An ancient home. Yeah. Yeah, it feels that way to me too. Galactic family, perhaps. You know, galactic family. Indeed. Yeah. Oh, well, well, that's I beautiful. feel like um, for a long time I didn't feel like connected to any race, any star race, you know, in particular. Mm -hmm. Well, over time and more recently, it's been more Palladian. I just feel more Palladian, you know, and I've been watching um, a channel called Cosmic Agency on YouTube. Right. Do you know about her? No, no. Very interesting because they, and she says this is not channeling. They actually are commuting, communicating with them online and live also. And there's a ship, it's a Tigetan, the Tigetan ship above the Earth, and they communicate with her. And a couple of them have lived on Earth. And so it's really, it's very interesting that they answer a lot of questions. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, all kinds of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do they say anything about the Earth right now, Deborah? What's that? Do they say anything about the Earth right now? No, they don't really. Um, I just remember Penny Kelly talking about it just recently. I know you guys are going to have her on your show again. Yes, yeah, we will. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But her last few videos have been really interesting, what she's been saying, like, you yeah. can say we are that the earth is moving into the fifth dimensional energies now um and one reason why she was in the hospital is because she was getting an upgrade right she just she wrote, like did it have to cost eighty thousand dollars <laughs> <laughs> in the 3d world yes <laughs> yeah it was really what you're saying, a lot of people won't make it because the energies are so strong. And I know why well, I've been really tired lately. I think. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we're the same. Yeah, yeah. So, Deborah, tell us, uh, by way of kind of pulling this all together, clearly you're tapped into wisdom. There's there's no question about that. And um, what what advice would you give to people who may be listening or watching that that are that may feel on the fringes that they don't know enough spiritually or they're not they don't have a spiritual circle to, to comfort them you know they might be in the 3d world and 
they don't understand what's happening to them. Like, why are they feeling the way? Why are they tired? Why are they upset? What What's going on? What advice would you give to them? I tell them, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Right. Nothing to be afraid of. It's your natural progression of things in your life. And so many of us are going through that. So many people have been doing it for a long time, but so many people now are awakening up to their spiritual essence, who they are. And for a long time, it's hard to understand what that means. Like, who am I? Yes. Start, you start getting it slowly. And I'm still like working on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, so, I think that's a, that's a beautiful piece of advice though, because um, people, seek out other people that can, that, you can practice your discernment on. I think yeah. that's very important right now. Right. Is... Yeah. Yeah. But that whole idea of fear, Deborah, that you, you're talking about, don't be afraid, where the the world of negativity, let's call it, mm -hmm. that's their modus operandi is to keep us in fear oh, yeah. on every front. So, and in fact, even Angel Rose loves to 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 find out and read about and listen to people who have had near death experiences and so on, and their message seems to be the same. You know, don't be afraid because, like, it's it's the most loving experience possible. It's wonderful. So I'm encouraged by your advice there to don't be afraid. My my friend in Portland, he's he's very spiritual, but he's so afraid, and he's in that dense dense city. He lives downtown even. Wow. Yeah, and he has a lot. I have to console him a lot. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's okay. You're going to be okay. You know, yeah. and he said, why am I here? I can't. He tried to leave. He tried to go to Ohio, and it kept shutting him down. Every time he tried right. to buy a place, it didn't happen. I said, and he, he knew. It was his guides. Yeah. You can't go, you can't go there. Just, yeah, he's he needed. And he said, he's... why do I have to stay here? I think because you're supposed to be the light there because it's so yeah. dark. It and sounds he said, like he's needed there. He, his his response was so 3D. And he said, but I only say hi to a few people. No, 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 no. It's That's not what it's about. It's about you just being there and all that light, you know, and he's in a building. It's like, like a, almost a, kind of like a group home. Yeah. And people are always yelling and screaming. And there's a hospital, you know, the, the um, ambulance comes for people. And it's so much loud, so much noise. And, you know. Yeah. 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 So I've been trying to help him get through that. <laughs> right. Well, clearly you are. And I think that your your experience and your wisdom will help a lot more too. And I would encourage you to write them down and, uh, you know, see, seek out being published because I think it's important for that message to go out to a wider audience. And even if it is just to dispense, dispel those fears that people have, you know, that it's okay to have these experiences. It's okay to feel the way you do. Yeah. And it's okay to have those memories. I have thought, I, I have thought of that because I, I'm like, why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing? And maybe that's just it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, look, unfortunately, we, we, we don't have any more time for this particular session, but I'm, I'm very grateful to you, Deborah, for sharing what you've done. And I think it's very courageous also for you to share that life uh, light language with us because I it, it certainly it touched me. You know, Angel Rose also felt um, that it was that ancient communication, and it was very reassuring actually. Um, so, your message about don't be afraid is going to go out to others, and hopefully, it will benefit them. And also, we hope that you do manifest your desires whether it's a new place or what it is, but that your manifesting does come to fruition. We support you with that. Thank you for sharing your dark night of the soul, your light language, and those experiences of your U UFO encounters and your your um, the, the experiences you had when you were 16 and uh, when you were so young, and for not crushing them and squashing them and for continuing to allow them to be. Okay, until next time, I want to say thank you again so much and blessings.
Thank you. Bye, Deborah. Nice to meet you. Yes, take care. Bye bye. So there you are. You heard light language direct from Deborah Bruce herself. If you'd like to get in touch with her, please contact us either through our YouTube channel, through the World of Empowerment, or from our websites at angelrose.com or ahanu.com, and we will put you in direct contact with Deborah. You would have heard us asking Deborah about journaling and taking notes and writing down her experiences. And it's something that we advise many, many people, and indeed, it has led to us publishing books for people over time. And we suggest the same thing to you. If you have experiences in your life that you believe would help others, do write them down, journal about them. Angel Rose has a wonderful course on how to journal so as to extract all those nuggets of information that are revealed through journaling. And that information may well change somebody's life, may well save somebody's life, who knows. So if you need help with that, let us know. We'd be delighted to guide you, having published over a thousand books and written over a hundred of our own. So that's it for now. Until next time, blessings from myself, Ahanu, and from Angel Rose. You can subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and on our website at worldofempowerment.com. Don't miss an episode. Hit the subscribe okay, button. Um, now. Yes, you all in the next few years, all showing now.